The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. He should have immediately denounced the mob when he saw what was unfolding. These facts require immediate action by President Trump. Hi again, everyone. It's 5 o'clock in the East, one week after the Capitol insurrection. Hearing that comment right there from one of Trump's strongest allies, that was Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, gave some a sliver of hope that the Trump takeover of House Republicans might be ebbing. But Kevin McCarthy would prove us all wrong for hoping that chance of hang Mike Pence and a noose erected to do just that would shake Kevin McCarthy from his Trump servitude. Nine days after Joe Biden took office, McCarthy was down at Mar-a-Lago kissing Trump's ring. But even more dangerous than his slobbering loyalty is McCarthy's attempt to rewrite what actually happened the day of the insurrection. Here he is yesterday responding to Fox News' Chris Wallace about his phone call with Trump on 1-6, showing a near about face from those comments on the House floor. Watch. When I talked to President Trump about, I was the first person to contact him when the riots was going on. He didn't see it. What he ended the call was saying, telling me he'll put something out to make sure to stop this. And that's what he did. He put a video out later. Quite a lot later. And it was a pretty weak video. But I'm asking you specifically, did he say to you, no, I guess not, some people no, are more concerned about the election than you are. No, listen, my conversations with the president are my conversations with the president. I engaged in the idea of making sure we could stop what was going on inside the Capitol at that moment in time. And the president said he would help. In the video, just a reminder, the president literally said, we love you to the insurrectionists. McCarthy's weakness and penchant for putting loyalty to Trump over everything else, over accountability to the truth, are on full display. And it's a mindset that's detailed in a new piece of reporting in The New York Times about him. The Times reports this, quote, as the end of the Trump presidency devolved into turmoil and violence, McCarthy faced a dilemma, one that has bedeviled his party for nearly five years. Should he cut Trump loose, as many Republicans were urging, or should he keep trying to make it work with an ousted president who remains the most popular and motivating force inside the GOP? McCarthy chose the latter, not for the first time. His extravagant efforts to ingratiate himself with Trump have earned him a reputation for being an alpha lapdog inside Trump's kennel of acolytes. What's even more ominous is McCarthy's full-throated defense of his role in perpetuating the big lie, a falsehood we already know has serious, sometimes deadly consequences. More from that Great Times reporting from Mark Leibovich, quote, pressed on whether he regretted working to overturn President Biden's 2020 victory, McCarthy took the position that he did no such thing. Quote, we voted not to certify two states, he said, referring to Arizona and Pennsylvania, whose slates of electoral votes McCarthy and fellow Republicans voted to challenge, despite offering no proof of fraud that would have altered the final tallies. But even if the Republicans' challenge had been successful in those states, Mr. McCarthy argues, the electoral votes would not have been enough to tip the nationwide vote away from Mr. Biden. Quote, and Joe Biden would still be sitting in the White House right now, he says. That narrative, undermined by Trump himself, who to this day views the election as stolen from him, it was not, of course, and felt stopping the congressional counting of the electoral votes on January 6th was his chance to get it back. So here we are, four months after the insurrection, and Trump's lapdogs are still defending Trump's actions, still choosing him to be their future, the future of the Republican Party, and still, still to this day, repeating the big lie. Like we're seeing right now in Arizona, as state Senate Republicans are running a faux audit of ballots in Maricopa County that have already been counted three times. The GOP doubling and tripling down on the dangerous and deadly big lie this is where we start this hour with some of our favorite reporters and friends. Charlie Sykes is here, editor at large of The Bulwark. Also joining us, Sam Stein, White House editor for Politico and former RNC chairman. You know I'm coming to you first. Michael Steele's here, lucky for us, all three MSNBC politi uh, contributors. So Michael Steele did a great Go piece of Charlie. reporting on McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to you first, but this refusal now that we know two new facts, we know that, that the domestic violent extremism threat that our intel chiefs and FBI director testified to in the last few weeks, the people who threaten us believe in the big lie. Not everyone who believes in the big lie threatens us, but a big chunk of the people who represent domestic violent extremist threats believe in the big lie. 
So when there, there's new information that could make Kevin McCarthy say, you know what, I don't want to exacerbate a domestic violent extremism threat. And two, they're choosing Donald Trump. Donald Trump didn't choose any of them. You could take or leave any one of them. This affirmative selection of him to be their leader, they have to boost him up now. He doesn't have a platform on which to communicate. So they're now propping him up so that he can continue to lead them. Why go out of their way to perpetuate that dysfunctional relationship that now contributes to a domestic violent extremism threat in the country? So, because where do you go? <laughs> where, where else do you go with well, this Well, anywhere point? else. I mean... Well... Yeah, for normal people, yeah, you would go in somewhere else. You would back away from it. Kevin McCarthy has been given opportunity after opportunity to to set a different course, to you know raise a different narrative. But the reality of it is, he wants to be Speaker of the House. He figures this is the pathway he needs to take to get there. Even though when that moment come, if it should come, Donald Trump is not going to be there for Kevin McCarthy, because Donald Trump will find somebody else who will be more Trumpian more legitimately Trumpian uh, to be the Speaker of the House. Uh, and so the, the reality of it is these folks put themselves out there for someone who doesn't care about them and would not put himself out there for him, for them. And, and so they, they find themselves in this weird space where they perpetuate the lies. They try to change the narratives. They tell us that we don't see what we see or hear what we hear all because they think on the other side of this, their objectives, their personal objectives, their political objectives will be realized. But the fact of the matter is it's not. The American people, look, this is the guy who wants to be the Speaker of the House. Now the census numbers are coming out. We're seeing where the demographics are shifting in the country. We recognize that the future could very well reveal a Kevin McCarthy type uh, or a Trump type uh, Speaker of the House. So what it tells me is that we as citizens have to re-engage. We have to get into this thing differently than we have because the people who are now calling the shots, at least in one party, uh, do not have our best interest at heart in the long term. And those of us inside and outside of that party have to try to change that course. And that's, that's the reality. It goes back to what you and Claire were talking about in the last hour. You know, call the thing what it is and be prepared to fight that thing. You can't pretend otherwise.